hit me. From Studio A in Arcata, behind the Redwood Curtain, it's time for... Suckatash. Yes, Suckatash, the comedy soundcast, soundcast featuring snippets from comedy... Soundcast. And also interviews with comedians, comedian soundcasters, and other showbiz folk. And now, here's this episode's host from up the coast, the man who puts the X in Xbox and the tie on antisocial, comedy soundcast soundcaster, Tyson Saner. Saner. In Saner. In Saner. In Saner. In Saner. Saner. Saluton, me, Tyson Saner. And I will be your host for this episode of Suckatash, that is number 290. Last week, in episode 289, Mark Hershon, with whom I share hosting duties in an every-other-weekly fashion, brought you a show that was a Chats episode, with returning guest Dana Carvey to talk about what he has been up to podcasting-wise, and it turns out he has several projects ongoing that you can hear more about by listening to that episode at your earliest convenience by finding it on Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, Apple and Google Podcasts, Deezer, and several other listening platforms. You can, of course, also find the show and its archive over at www.suckatashshow.com. This week on Suckatash, I've got a trio of clips for you from the soundcasts Almost Viral with Simon the Magpie, Brian and Roger, and The Problem with Jon Stewart. On a personal note, I'd like to mention that this is the first episode of Suckatash that I have produced since my son turned three years old. Wow. I remember when he was negative seven. Tempest Fugit and all that, eh? Let's get to the clips. First up, Almost Viral with Simon the Magpie, from Almost Viral. Its description says, Simon the Magpie in conversation with fellow content creators about the lifestyle of online creativity. I first discovered Simon the Magpie on YouTube. I ran across a video he did where he used a cat keyboard that I actually, my son has, to make a, a, uh, a song. I thought that was really creative and fun and started watching his videos and DIY projects. So the clip I've selected is from an episode from the 4th of January, 2022, and it's a pilot episode. He has about five now. Uh, The pilot episode is with someone named Analog Weapon. And the description says, in this episode, we discuss the starting of this podcast, the idea behind it, some plans and a proper introduction to my co-host Analog Weapon and the Magpie Pirates community. Of course, we derail from those topics a whole bunch and just start digging into whatever comes to mind. But all in all, it's just a solid pilot episode. I have this funny story, though, that I said oh, that yeah, I wanted had... to tell you. Yeah, the yeah, hilarious yeah. story you said oh, that I, I totally should get forgot. ready for because yeah, it was yeah. so good. It's a very short really story, long. but this is oh, I mean, explicit short. content now, everybody. I hope you're ready. <laughs> if you're still here listening to this. <laughs> so this, this literally now. happened... 10 minutes before I called you earlier today, when you were at work, I had to tell someone. <laughs> so I've been redoing the sauna. So if you if you know, if you come here with the knowledge of having watched my videos or something, then you know that I'm in a little room. And then right, if you go out through the door where I have all my advertisement uh, <laughs> on the door... <laughs> You go, there's a toilet and then there's a sauna. And you've, yeah. you've seen this, like the door has yeah. been open. And the ceiling is like uh, tiles or I don't know how to say, it, like foam tiles. So it's like a bunch of squares that you can lift up. Yeah. The, sort of off the yeah, sea. Drop you know? ceiling, yeah, they yeah. call it. Yeah. And um, I was, I, I've been re, redoing the sauna, which is weird. Weird sentence to give without a context. Uh, the sauna is a storage unit now, basically. So I, I have a lot of shit there. And I, I yeah. went to Ikea with my dad the other day. And I bought a ton of shelves to put up like in the entire sauna. Because I can't screw in the walls. So I have to have them yeah. standing on the upper bench in the sauna. This is giving way too much context for this story. But <laughs> fuck it. Uh, so I've been doing that, and then I wanted to to get a uh, like to get some more electricity into the sauna so I can have more lights because it's only the sauna lights, so it's very yeah sauna lighty in there, you know, oh, warm, kind of yeah dark. warm dark. Um, so then what I did is um, I I took a, a cable and it goes up into the ceiling and then all the way and down on the other like right outside the sauna and then into the sauna. 
so it, yeah. it doesn't have to run through the floor you know because yeah. there's a hole in this wall for for a cable so i start lifting this uh, ceiling like dr the drop down ceiling one one at a time and to shove the cable on top of them to get all the way back yeah. and then when i lift the third one something falls down to the ground what could it be you want me to guess yeah. i'm guessing it was a mouse no it was a porno magazine from 1993 <laughs> <laughs> in the sauna or above no, the just ceiling outside the, the sauna. sauna so someone has stored a fucking porno mag that used to work here <laughs> in 1993 and it's I wonder so if that was... nasty bad porno. <laughs> I wonder if that was like when it was still a sauna. Yeah. <laughs> who, but who reads porn in the sauna? I don't know what people do in saunas. I'm not Swedish. <laughs> oh, yeah, true. But also in the 90s. But yeah, yeah that, that speaking of like things that predates the internet. Like you, yeah. back in the day, people had to get magazines <laughs> yeah right like that like back in 93 that would have been like a not that's not like a that would have been like a utilitarian like thing to do because like that's that's where your porn was yeah you needed to have it somewhere and you're saving it up well, there also you, on the someone, phone someone got it and then put it back up there a bunch of times did you ever prank call like a oh yeah like a phone all number? the time so yeah you, yeah you we would sit that. around and do that all day sometimes yeah <laughs> That's a, that's a weird activity to do for an entire day, actually. But I guess well, that's I, puberty yeah. for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I was like 14 or 13. You know? But you said we. Like, you were doing it with friends? Yeah. Then it yeah. makes sense that you could do it for an entire day. Because nobody could yeah, do we were... anything with, the like, the emotions or... like No, not on my own. Yeah. 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 Cause you that could, would be weird. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Unless you're recording. But yeah. there are some there are some pretty... Longmont Potion Castle. Shout out. I think most people probably know who that. That's the guy who records good prank phone calls. <laughs> ah, yeah, we have. I only have a Swedish reference, <laughs> and there, uh, nobody will know person. about that. Yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I want it. What is it? No, 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 just the same thing. Just a Swedish guy who prank yeah. calls, but obviously not as famously because it's just yeah. a Swedish <laughs> yeah. prank caller. <laughs> It is. It's. It's a funny activity. I still. I still think it's funny. To I mean, as long call? as you're not. Yeah. I mean, I don't do it, but I'm saying it's still the the concept amuses me because people don't realize they can just hang up. You know. That know. might be true. <laughs> so the Magpie Pirates does have an active Discord. Uh, there is a Patreon, which is at almost viral. If you're interested, you can reach the show on Twitter. Uh, well, Simon the Magpie has a Twitter account. Um, it is at S-I-M-O-N-T-H-E-M-A-G-P-I-E. -E. But by his own admission in the show, he does not really use it very much. The show also does not have a Twitter account. But um, So you can go to magpiepedals.com, and that is M-A-G-P-I-E-P-E-D-A-L-S.com, uh, where he makes custom uh, guitar pedals and also effects pedals, I guess, basically. Uh, he and his friend Horseman. So they, they make boutique pedals and synths uh, in the Swedish archipelago, they say. And you can find Analog Weapons music at Analog Weapon, A N A L O G W E A P O N dot bandcamp dot com. Next up, Brian and Roger from Cheese and Pickle. So this one was recommended to us by Davian Dent of Strange Times Podcast, which we've clipped a few times over the. Over the over 10 years, this show has been in search of soundcast clips. So thank you for pointing me this way to Brian and Roger. It's a very simple uh, description. It says, Brian and Roger met at a support meeting for divorced men. Both are starting again. Both are finding it hard. One of them is nice. And then it says, a podcast sitcom from Harry Peacock and Dan Skinner. So yes, it is a scripted podcast. And its conceit is that it is all communicated through answering machine messages. And the clip I've chosen is from an episode that was posted on December 24th of 2021. It was called Xmas Special 2021, colon, Some Avatar at Christmas, unquote. In which, the description says, Roger helps Brian with the arrangements for Auntie Leslie's Christmas celebrations. Hi, Rog. It's Brian. <clears throat> 
Look, I don't think you can give someone a, a, a pair of your old trainers for Christmas, mate. That's a really fucking weird idea. But, you know, no. Um, yeah, maybe, maybe make something. I, I, I don't know. Yeah, make, maybe make something. But, um, yeah, there's going to be all the uh, disciples there as well. And I, I don't know how all this plays out. Maybe we have to get them something. I think they know we're coming. So, but we could get like small things like, I don't know, chewing gum or, or whatever. I don't know. I don't know. We should think about that. Um, but yeah, look, we won't muck the car up. That'll be fine. And, and it'll be fun. The other thing is, mate, is, you know, there's this ceremony on the evening. Um, and it, it's a sort of rebirth ceremony. And what honestly Leslie's done in the past is there's this concoction that you knock up. Um, and um, there's stuff in it which, which makes your heart stop. Um, now, I have volunteered you for this because I, I think it has to be someone out, outside of the family. But it, your heart will stop, but it will only stop for five minutes max. And Andy's there and he's St John's. So, you know, every base is covered and there's a defibrillator and one of those electric, you know, the two things like iron, irons with the electricity, you know, so don't worry. Uh, but it should be fun um, and it's, um, you know, we'll be with family and uh, better than being in the weather spoons or whatever. All right, mate, looking forward to it. Okay, bye. Hello, Brian, um, it's Roger here. Um, look, mate, you, you, you know I'm open-minded, I'm sort of up for most things, but um, disregarding this rebirth ceremony thing, I mean, you know, five minutes seems like a hell of a long time for, for a heart to stop. Um, you know, I just, has she done it before? I mean, what, what, what happens when, when, a heart is stopped for five minutes. That's going to affect the brain, isn't it? And, you, I, you know, I know it has to be done to someone outside the family, but can't one of the Canadian disciples drink this potion? I mean, what's in the potion to make a heart stop as well? I think, you know, it'd be good to to know that before I commit to anything like this, mate, because it's not what I had had in mind for for Christmas. And, and what's, the, what's the purpose of it as well? I mean, what benefit is there having your heart stopped for five minutes in a ceremony? Um... Just, yeah. But no, I mean, mate, we can probably stop at the service station and get the Canadian disciples some, some chewing gum, as you say, or, or um, I don't know, some sweets or something, just as a token. Um, and I thought uh, maybe I would make Les, Auntie Leslie a dartboard. Um, just an idea. I don't know how, really how to make a dartboard, but, I, you know, I think it's the thought that counts, isn't it? But if you could let me know about those questions, mate, because I'm... I, I think I'd just rather watch Avatar and just chill out. OK, bye-bye. Oh, for... F Roger, it's Brian. The, for, for fuck's sake, mate, stop being such a cunt! It's a fucking rebirth ceremony, all right? It's, 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 it's festive. You know, it's being born again, like, like Jesus. It's, you know, it's, it's just a pagan version of it. And I said, I said that Andy is St John's ambulance, Roger. He knows what he's doing, you know? It's gone... It's gone pear-shaped in the past, and he, he's picked up the fucking pieces, so just stop getting your knickers in such a fucking twist. The, the dartboard's a great idea, OK? So let's stick with the dartboard, because that, that, that's, that's brilliant. We'll, we'll, we'll get the disciples something from the service station. There's a couple of places. I've already got my thinking cap on about that, so that's fine. So, you know, just fucking lighten up, you know, and just get with the Christmas spirit. All right, mate, bye. Hi, Rog. It's Brian. Look, sorry, I, I flipped then, but I, I, you know, I want you to know that, you know, this is this is a bit of an opportunity. Not many people get to do this, and and the people that have recovered completely from it have found it a really amazing, you know, overwhelming experience. And and you know, it's so so you, you're you're in a a small group of people that are getting this opportunity. You know, so and honestly, the dartboard is a really good idea. Um, and I think. Auntie Leslie will love it, and you know we'll still get a chance to watch Avatar. We just find a moment, you know. I know she's got a DVD player, or and we we'll work it out. So you know we'll get everything done, mate. And um, like you said, it'll be a road trip. Okay, all right. Cheers, Rog. Bye. So you might be interested to know that Brian and Roger was adapted into a play called Brian and Roger, a highly offensive play in 2021, and had write-ups at independent.co.uk and theguardian.com. You can reach the show on Twitter at Brian and Roger. That is all lowercase B-R-I-A-N-A-N-D-R-O-G-E-R. 
Harry Peacock can be reached at all lowercase H-A-R-R-Y P-E-A-C-O-C-K and then the numeral one and the numeral seven. Dan Skinner does not appear to have a Twitter account, nor does Joel Morris, who is credited as the producer of the show. But Cheese and Pickle uh, has the account Cheese Pickle Pod, which is capital C-H-E-E-S-E, capital P-I-C-K-L-E, and capital P-O-D. Also, Audi, A-U-D-D-Y, they produce and represent World Class Podcasts, and that is Audi Shows, capital A-U-D-D-Y, capital S-H-O-W-S. This portion of Succotash is brought to you by Henderson's Turtleneck Slacks. If you're a gentleman of proportion who tends to leave nothing to the imagination whenever you squat down, or if you've ever been mistaken for a bike rack just by bending over to tie your shoe, maybe it's time to consider checking out a pair of Henderson's Turtleneck Slacks. Where most pants end at the waistline, Henderson's Turtleneck Slacks are just getting started. You get a generous three inches of ribbed cotton fabric that both gives and supports where it counts, the gut and buttocks. What's more, there's no need to worry about whether your belt matches your shoes. With Henderson's turtleneck slacks, you just pull them up and forget them. The ingenious turtleneck waist keeps your pants in place, and even if you have to jump around, we guarantee you'll never show anything so much as an inch of butt crack or a sliver of that ample full moon. It's always tucked away safe and sound in your Henderson's Turtleneck Slacks. Originally designed for plumbers, construction workers, and priests, you can now pick up a pair of Henderson's Turtleneck Slacks wherever fine pantaloons are sold. And now, back to Succotash. Thank you, Bill Haywatt. I have no idea why I picked that particular one. I think it's because I couldn't really find anything thematic, and I hadn't heard that one in a while. So there's a little peek behind the curtain for y'all. Anyway, finally tonight is The Problem with Jon Stewart from Apple TV+. Plus. So The Problem with Jon Stewart is a Apple TV Plus program that also has a podcast iteration, and this is a clip from that. The description says, The issues we tackle on The Problem with Jon Stewart are too big for TV. And then there's a, a little trademark note after that for some reason. So they spill over into the brilliantly titled The Problem with Jon Stewart podcast. Jon is joined by the staff and expert guests for nuanced discussions, updates on action items, and airing of grievances from writers over jokes that didn't make the show. So the clip I've chosen is from January 13th of 2022, in which Jon talks to Mark Cuban. And it's called Billionaire's basketball and bitcoin the description says we are back baby we're kicking off 2022 with billionaire slash colonoscopy bargain hunter mark cuban john and mark discuss the american dream barriers to entry and why tying health care to jobs makes no sense and what's a chat without a tech billionaire if crypto doesn't come up john is joined by show writers takara mallard and rob christensen to talk national anthems and john's experience at the white house you know i was talking about this with Kerr the other day, and the driving force behind the league is the talent of almost entirely black ball players. You know, when they when they talk about balancing the playing field, it always feels like a negotiation from a group white that's traditionally owned the country negotiating with people of color for a piece of something that they shouldn't it shouldn't be a negotiation. In other words, while they're fighting for equality white people are building equity, right? You know, the context is everything, right? It's easy for me and you to, to look at the big picture and, you know, take notes and, and give commentary. But, you know, we've both been in situations where it wasn't, we weren't on easy street, right? And it wasn't so simple. And so really context matters. But given where we are, it's valuable to have those discussions. I've invested 50 plus million dollars in funds and companies of people of color, men and women, because, you know, I think there's unique opportunity there. I, I like to invest where people aren't looking. And hopefully some of those deals will turn into something significant. And someone can come along and say, you know what, you old white guys, you missed the boat. You know, now it's mostly people of color who are in position of power, because you weren't looking when the demographics of the entire country changed. And you were trying to, you know, mine what was already there. And so I think, you know, there's the opportunity for change. Now we'll see what happens. You know, inertia kind of drives the status quo, right? You know, you sort of have this idea that things stay the way they are. 
Do you have that situation in in your businesses that you don't realize that there are these unseen structural obstacles to getting the talent from different, and by the way, not just racial diversity. I'm talking about like, we didn't have any veterans. Well, no, it has to be front of mind, right? Mm -hmm. And so I'm not going to lie and say, I've always had, you know, very diverse workforces. That's just not the case. But I think, you know, I try to be very disruptive in the businesses that I enter. And in order to be disruptive, you've got to be very cognizant of what's happening in the world and look for where those opportunities are. It took me a while to realize that if I hire people from the Indian community in Dallas, which is the sixth largest Indian community in the country, I'm going to sell a lot more to that community because they know the community. If I hire veterans, if I hire people of color, if I hire women of color, if I hire people that represent the LGBTQ community, you know, it just makes good business sense now. But that's not the perspective that's had from, you know, the more traditionalists or what you would consider the nativists or things like that. Well, there's a reason why the word conserve is in conservative. Right. You know, there, there are always going to be people who don't want change. But just look at how much has changed among the things that we thought would never change from pot to, you know, gay weddings to you name it. The list is long. You know, to, it, it's just it takes time. You know, when, when you look at anything at one given snapshot, it always looks really, really painful. But when you take a longer term horizon, you see progress. And, you know, Father Time is undefeated. You know, it's interesting. They always talk about the arc of the moral history is long, but it bends towards justice. But I think they never tell you, like, but there's going to be a pretty substantial group that's trying to bend it back the other way. Yeah, of course. And, yeah. and it's going to be that that push and pull uh, that creates it. Why do you think the boardroom is so resistant to that kind? Because, man, if there is a Maginot line that's sort of standing uh, sentinel in front of it, it's a boardroom. Because it seems well, to me like there are structural issues. Still. Of course there's structural issues. It's very simple. Who wants to give up their spot? Right. Oh, by the way, John, you're on our board. You're getting hundreds of thousands of dollars a year in cash and stock. You want to quit now so we can make room for somebody else? Just to else? be on the board? Yeah, just to be on the board and, you know, make a few phone calls and, and you know, be there and show up via Zoom now. You don't even have to go to to Las Vegas or Arizona for Mark, the meeting. I'm, I'm honored that you asked me to be on the I'm happy <laughs> to do it. I'm delighted. What an exciting time. Yeah, no one wants to give up those spots. I mean, it really comes down to what is the makeup of the ownership group that's coming in because we can and should make that accommodation to make sure that you know we're expanding diversity because it's good business. It's not like, okay, let's just make it look good out there. Let's just virtue signal. You're, you're not right? talking about making a moral decision. You're talking about making an efficiency decision, yeah, uh, a, business a capital decision. decision, and a business decision. Right. I mean, look, if people of color are going to be the majority in this country and we want our product to reach the majority of this country, you want people who have a stronger connection than somebody who looks like me. Right. Finding people who look like me is easy. Oh, no, I know that. I see you everywhere. Yeah. I see you all. <laughs> Vice versa. I see you all over the place. <laughs> So you can reach the show on Twitter at The Problem, capital T-H-E, capital P-R-O-B-L-E-M. You can reach the host, John Stewart, at all lowercase J-O-N-S-T-E-W-A-R-T. The guest, Mark Cuban, can be reached at all lowercase M Cuban, that is M-C-U-B-A-N. And I guess the show's website is uh, theproblem.com, T-H-E-P-R-O-B-L-E-M dot com. Hey, it's the end of the show. Glad you made it. Thank you for joining me. I do hope you found something entertaining contained within the audio you just experienced. Maybe you'll seek out more episodes from the creators we sampled for you. Maybe you will be inspired to start your own soundcast. Maybe you will never listen to another soundcast after this one. Who knows? I certainly don't, nor would I pretend to. I feel that would be unethical somehow. At any rate, I appreciate your spending time with us here at Sepatash, and before I say goodbye for this episode, I'd like to remind you to consider rating and reviewing us if your listening platform gives you those options. You might also consider going to www.tysonsander.com to have a look at my other content, including music, gaming videos, and an entirely other soundcast called Anti-Social Show that is in its fifth year currently and has a few video versions of the program on YouTube. I'd really appreciate it if you did. I'd really appreciate any real sponsor that might be interested in doing a little business with us. I'd really appreciate it if the pandemic was over. As long as I'm saying what I'd appreciate, I'd like to throw in telling people about us. Is what we mean when we ask you to please pass the succotash.